So we're talking about betrayal in relationships in my practice with uh, clients and especially club couples who come and the one has had an affair and the other one comes crying, oh, my spouse, my partner had an affair and I'm hurt and angry and, and he betrayed me or she betrayed me, you know? So this comes up, this betrayal, right? When I work with the people, slowly, slowly helping them to see, because I experienced this in my own life and it was my own journey. So personally and professionally, I really have dealt with this in a very deep level that it comes to what I call the betrayal of our belief system that we've learned. Betrayal is about uh, the beliefs I've learned betrayed me, got me to think a certain condition existed that was actually a myth. You know, I believe that my beloved who I fell in love with would be with me forever would never forsake me for another, would never leave me, would never, whatever, whatever. And we go into relationships with this programming. I've seen this all around the world, everywhere I've been, and especially in, in my work. I learned this myself. I had this indoctrination in my head, this belief structure. So what is actually causing the suffering is not what the other person did, but that it triggered this belief. The conflict arose in me of the belief that, no, this would never happen. This is bad. This is wrong. This is bad. That person is bad person for doing that. Leaving me, betraying me, uh, right? And it's actually the belief I had that this would never happen. This should never happen. But it generally happens one way or the other, whether the person, the other partner is involved actually with a human or with celluloid through the internet or with you know, uh, sex workers or whatever, somewhere along the line. And it's not just one partner the, and the other, it's not so black and white here either. There's a mixture that goes on in people or well, they're victimized by their fantasies. See, they need a fantasy to be able to generate a sexual impulse or whatever impulse they wish. Meanwhile, the betrayer, the predator, the one who did some action that caused the hurt, you see, then they're loaded with guilt and confusion and, oh my God, what did I do? And, or, yeah, so this is, this is what we do now. This is normal. We move into, you know, these multi relationships with one another, except the other partner doesn't know you're moving into a multi relationship or a polyamorous situation, unless you tell them. And how do you tell them? Or then we have situations where one partner realizes or it emerges that they're bisexual and oh my god and so they start mm -hmm. having an affair you know with same sex uh same gender whatever person over here while they're still in relationship with some spouse or committed uh, heterosexual partner you see <sighs> then we have this going on but in the midst of all of this, what happens is guilt arises, shame arises, pain arises, suffering arises. But when we work, when I work with these people and together, um, we begin to unravel all the layers of the programming, the learned pattern of beliefs that, no, this is not what happens in you know, we don't do this in a committed relationship. This doesn't happen. This shouldn't happen. It's not going to happen. I, if it does happen, I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to whatever. But then the other person remains with their anger and resentment and they're stuck with that. They're victimized. They become victimized by these 
feelings they don't know how to resolve. Meanwhile, the other person remains in this suffering, which I call a victimization of, oh my God, I can never make this right. How do I make this right? I can't make this right. I, I don't know how to make this right. Mm -hmm. What do I do? This kind of thing, see? So um, when what I have found in my own life and also how I work with people is that if we keep unraveling what is really causing the suffering here, whatever your suffering is, whether you're suffering with guilt or you're suffering with um, anger, righteous anger, or whatever this causing the pain, go into the pain. What is causing this? What is really causing it? To me, it comes into what I learned about how it should be. This is how it should be. Mm. It ought to be. The Disney myth of, oh, I meet the one and we're going into the sunset forever together and bliss. The challenge with that myth has come to me as I've understood it or am understanding it is that there is a kernel of truth in that because what I have seen in my life over many decades is that every single person who comes into my life comes into my life and really stays in my life whether I don't see them again, whether I don't see them for 50 years, whether they, they transition, they die, I don't see them, but they're in me. They're in my memory system. And so if I still find within that memory system, that person, that either I did something to them or they did something to me, if I use those, that terminology, where suffering was happening, then I still am thinking about this. I still am triggered by this. I'm still am annoyed by this. I'm still restless with this. It bothers me. It disturbs me. So anything in those categories how I deal with it and work with people is let's, let's come to a resolution here. Let's come to a clearer understanding of what really happened to the best of our ability. So we can heal our suffering. So we're not victimized by a pull or a, you know, a trigger. And in, as I have seen in, in the physical world, in terms of laws of physics, the magnetism law, the law of magnetic attraction, is that as long as I'm connected to some form of suffering, whether it's annoyance, bother, you know, it gives me a woozy feeling, an icky feeling, I still have a magnetic impulse that's drawing this situation to me to be healed to be resolved, to become fluid, connected. You see, um, and, and an analogy that I use, I think all of us have had at one time or another splinters. Get a splinter in your finger. Yes, many right? times. Yeah, right, we've all had like, and there's different ways of dealing with the splinter. A common way, at least, that I used to learn is that, oh, it's there, I'll just put some salve on it and wrap it up and deal with it later and go on with my day, right? And so then I never have time to really deal with the thing. So I just keep putting some salve on it or ointment or whatever and wrap it up and then gradually skin forms over it, but the splinter's still in there. And depending how deep or sharp it is, it's still a bother. It's an annoyance because I can, if I, if I do this with my finger, the finger has the splinter in it. It, it bothers me. It hurts me. It annoys me. Get me splinting like this, right? 
<laughs> so what am I going to do with this splinter? I'm either going to ignore it. I'm going to just learn to live with it and just accept it. It's just going to be annoying. Or I'm going to say splinter. You know what? I'm going to slit the skin. I'm going to dig you out. Get rid of the splinter. And then take care that the, the finger heals. You know, help the finger because the skin is going to knit together with connective tissue. It's going to naturally knit. You know, and if I don't want to scar, there are ways to deal with the scar tissue, you know, with castor oils and other oils to work that through. And then eventually then I can touch my finger and there's no, no splinter in it. There's, mm. It's healed. So this is the route that I choose. Dig in there. Dig the thing out. Now, this is going to hurt to do that. It's not going to be very pretty. Sometimes it'll be very nasty because it's already gotten deeply embedded in there. So I got to go through a couple of layers of digging and scraping, getting it out. So this is going to feel a little uncomfortable in that process. But I know that if I really dig it out, this thing will heal. It will. Or at least I have the hope that it will. 